Now we move right along to agency storytelling. And to take us through the same next segment, uh, please welcome Charlie again on stage to introduce the founder and partner of Grupo ABC, Nizan Guanaush. Hello. Bienvenido. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Very much. Nizan. How are you? Nice Great to see you. We haven't, we haven't actually seen each other this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a man who is described uh, as the Sir Martin Sorrel of Brazil. <laughs> what do you think about that? Higher. The, um, the president of the Clinton Foundation Brazil, who sits on the board with, obviously, Bill Clinton. So doing your bit for the global story as well. Um, it's an absolute honor and a pleasure to have Nizan here. We've been asking him to this festival for many years, and you've finally given up, and we've beaten you into submission. Ladies and gentlemen, um, the man behind Grupo ABC, one of the most powerful ad men in Brazil, and soon to be the world. Let's hear about that. Huge round of applause for Mr. Nizan Guanais. Thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. I'm very stupid. I don't know how to deal with these things. So if I have any problem, I'm going to ask for you, Mary, OK? So we are going to talk about storytelling, ladies and gentlemen. But especially, we are going to talk how Latin America should rewrite our story. And I tell you why. We are talking, every time we are talking about storytelling, 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 like if storytelling was a brand new thing, and that is not true. Storytelling is the oldest thing in the world. We have been doing that since the cages. The Bible is the greatest example of storytelling. Jesus was the greatest storyteller of the world. You read that, hello, you read that every single night. So people now uh, in Silicon Valley, you know, they are trying to tell us that they are inventing things, you know? Everything is new. Social media is new, huh? It's not true. The Lions Club was there, the Hottery, uh, the scouts, that's all about social networks. So Jesus used to have storytellers. He told them a, a parable. The king of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted. That's storytelling. And that's what Jesus used to do. Jesus told them, the king of heaven is like a man who sold good seed in his field. That's storytelling. That's very, very old. Your mother told you that. Aesop fables with morals are also a great example of storytelling. Storytelling has been in our life always. The race is not always to the swift, the rare and the tortoise. There's a time for work and a time for play. That's good for Brazil. huh? The ant and the grasshopper. I started my story in a church. I started as a preacher. Hallelujah. Please. I, very, very low. Hallelujah. Thank you. I'm going to spread, you know, the, the coins so, so you put the money in. So I started my story in a church as a preacher. It's true. That's, that's how I started my life. And I created ABC. ABC is the largest group. We are the, the 1920th, it depends on the currency. The, the 1920th group in Latin America. And we are the only one. Because what happened in our region is this. Our region is a, is a rich region with poor agencies. How come? How can that be possible? How can we let everything go to Martin Sorrell's, um, uh, Maurice Levy, and John Wren's pocket? Why? That's colonialism. <laughs> so, I'm not saying that they're wrong. We are wrong. 
That's why Harvard says our story, we are act bigger than we, than we are. That's how we did it. We said, no, we belong to a big country, and we deserve and we have the right to think big. This is a big continent, and why should all the agencies think small? Why? Why? It's not fair. And we did it by creating global brands based in Brazil. Africa, we just became being appointed the Advertising Agency of the Year by Ad Advertising Age. And we were appointed one of the 10 uh, best agencies in the world by Adweek. Let me show you this. DM9. DM9 is a legend. 117 lions at the Cannes Festival, two Grand Prix at the Cannes Festival, and four times Agency of the Year at the Cannes Festival. We made strong brands. Africa. International Agency of the Year this year, by that age. One of the 10 most creative agencies in the world by Adweek, with Adam Eve, DDB from London, Arcade from Singapore, BTC Paris, Fortman Bordoff from Gothenburg, Fred and Farid Shanghai, Grape, Hungry Man from Moscow, McCann, Melbourne, Ogby Mather, Mumbai, and Scrum Group, Nairobi. And I'm not even talking about Pereiro Dell, who belongs to our group too. And it is amazing. In just one year, Pereiro Dell won three Grand Prix and won an Emmy. I'm not going to talk because I want to make my point. However, have you ever wondered why Brazilian advertising has been so much awarded? Have you ever wondered why Brazilian advertising has spread out so many creatives around the world? I'll tell you why. This is a very creative continent. Everybody, Peruvians, Argentinians, Bolivians, this is a very creative country. But this has to do with something called, one reason is related to media. You know, this morning, I lost my wallet. What is a man without a wallet? Huh? Not even my wife is going to talk to me. <laughs> you know, uh, my wife, uh, uh, she had her credit card stolen, you know. But I, I didn't tell the police because the, the, the thief was spending less. American Express called me and they said, what happened to our relationship, Mr. Guanais? <laughs> so I lost, I, I lost my wallet in, in the car. And, and, and I went to the woman in the front desk and I, I showed her my passport. Everything was okay, but she said, I want your credit card. So what is happening with our agencies all around the region is we what lost our wallet. We have no relevance. We don't buy anything. And we go to Cannes, we talk about integration, but we don't have wallets. All our wallets are in Mohi's pockets, in Martin's pocket, in John Wren's pocket. We, no wallets. We're kind of like, like Scotland, you know. So one of the reasons is related to media. But the other reason is, our strength in Brazil, and you can talk with the people from media, I recognize you all around because I do business with you. We dream together. We make special projects together, and that is very important. Especially now, when digital comes in with programmatic media. Media is a creative decision. Media is a creative decision. It's not something that you're going to do apart. It's the heart of, the, of a body. How come you're going to give your heart away? And you, then you say, no, but you, the television stations pay you rebates. Well, the media company pays us rebates. Everybody knows us. Isn't that true? 
Am I telling a lie? Can somebody s raise up and say that I'm telling a lie? Can you please do that? He is lying. No. No, I am not lying. That we are lying in this region, and we have to be strong back again. I know that they will never invite me to come back again in this meeting. <laughs> never. So, hello and f goodbye. <laughs> but that does make us strong and business-oriented. That's what happens in Brazil. You know, we are strong and we are business oriented and we talk to the companies, we dream with them, we plan with them. I've been working with Itaú for 30 years and you can ask Itaú how I have been ethic, how I have always taken decisions on their behalf, how I've advised them doing things with other competitors, like Rock and Rio, who took away a big blow in their span, but it was important for them. So, so it's very important to know that Brazilian advertising is strong because we do business. We are not a man without a wallet. The other thing is, in most part of the world, agencies have lost the power. They are ill new. That's what they are. They desire, but they cannot. <laughs> and this has to change. You may throw me away, you may never invite me, but that's what's making advertising agencies small in this region. They have great talent, but what, what happens? In order to be to make a career, they have to go to Spain, they have to go to London, they have to go to somewhere else. They cannot stay in their homeland. And this is not fair, because this is the continent of Corona, of Bimbo, of Pemex, of many other things, of Carlos Lim, so many brilliant men. So we should be strong also in advertising. If we are going to move from commodity to aggregated value, we need strong advertising agencies. The other thing is this. I think that was a tremendous blow on agencies' capacity of being oriented by business result and effectiveness. If you look at the main global agencies, the top 10 belong to groups who have buying companies, WPP, Omnicom, Publicis, Interpublic. But look. They are, between these guys, other special guys like the Brazilians, the Japanese. And that is the reason why they are the only ones who are here. Dentsu and Hakohudu. You know why? Because they play their own game. They buy media too. And that makes them strong. Because otherwise, you know, it's like the World Series. I, I love the United States, but it's funny because you guy plays the World Series and it's between yourselves. <laughs> that, that's funny. Isn't that? Yeah? So that's what Martin Sorrell and John Wren play. They play the World Series. It's between the, themselves. Uh, so I think that in Latin America, we should start rethink, rethinking very strongly about that. And it's time to have the entire power back. Digital is going to give us this possibility. And we have to have the entire power back in our hands instead of just having crumbles. And this is crucial. What is also crucial is the power of our culture. And I'll show you something. This is local culture, bottles. And this is main culture, mainstream, cans. You know why a big beer company cannot simply get into a country because they don't have enough bottles. Do you understand? They have to have a volume of bottles. So it's very hard to get into Brazil if you don't have en enough bottles. 
But if you have cans, which is the, the mainstream culture, you can come in. So what defends you from being invaded by someone else is your culture, the bottle. Okay? Campaigns oriented to our culture is a bottle. Campaign oriented to advertising festivals is a can. Anybody can do. So the perfect nightmare is this. I take away your power of buying, and you start creating campaigns like if you are French. Isn't that fantastic? You're Peruvian. You have a wonderful culture. Your food is amazing. And you, you behave and you create like if you're a Belgian. That's stupid. We should start to care less about making campaigns to please the jury of the international advertising festivals and care more about campaigns to please the Argentinians, the Peruvians, the Costa Ricans, the, the Dominicans, the Brazilians, that we should focus on our culture and to talk to our people. That's how I became rich. I created the mammal campaign in Brazil. You know, uh, children dressed like mammals. People say it's, it's cheesy. Cheesy is the word, right? Cafona. But I became rich. <laughs> and you know, I have the same, there's something that Martin Israel and I have in common. We love money. We share the same value. He, he has more value than I do, but we share. <laughs> That's what Washington Oliveto taught me. To create things people love, the common people. If you want to know if your advertising agency is doing well, you go to a birthday party. And the woman sits down beside you and she asks to you, what do you do? You say, I work with advertising. People don't care about advertising. They care about wine, sex, soccer. So they come to you and say, tell me about one campaign you did. And you say, I did the campaign for Itaú for the World Cup. Oh. Oh. It's the awe factor. Can you repeat with me? Oh. No, no. Look, louder. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Let's repeat something very important together. We love money. We love money. No, you don't, you're not in confidence with that, you know. <laughs> you're talking too much to Martin Sohel. Let's speak louder. We love money. No. Stronger. We love money. Fantastic. You're on track. So, that's how Washington Oliveto taught me. So we have to tell our stories, charge for that, because we are, begun, we are becoming to be NGOs, you know? Charge for that. Make money. And with our language. With our language, with our culture. This will make us very strong again, all around the region. And that's what I want to do. I want to buy agencies in Mexico, in Peru, in Argentina, in Colombia. This is what we do in Brazil. That's what makes us strong. Talk to the people in Brazil. Talk to the media in Brazil. CNA Brazil offered a solution to a big problem among women. Insecurity when shopping. After all, which woman has never wanted an opinion on the right clothes? But instead of just one opinion, why not get opinions from a huge network of people? CNA Fashion Life. 
At the stores, we had racks with special hangers that counted the likes given for their respective pieces on Facebook in real time. You liked the piece you enjoyed the most on the fan page, and that like instantly showed up on the hanger. This is how CMA helped thousands of women on the tough mission of finding the ideal outfit. The campaign was a great success, but what really matters, no indecisive women during the purchase. CNA Fashion Life. Isn't that fun? Can you imagine my wife doing that? Let's see another. For years, we've been making friends in the same way. Brazilians are very obsessed with Facebook. Now, toasting has received an upgrade. Budweiser presents the Buddy Cup, a cup integrated with Facebook. When two people clinked their cups, they became friends. Each person that entered a Bud event would connect their Facebook profile with the cup's chip. So, they just did the same as always, went out drinking Bud and making new friends. Results, Budweiser got closer to consumers and consumers got closer to each other and more. Facebook fan numbers went up by 30%. The case received thousands of views on YouTube. Free media impressions across the internet and blogs around the world. Fortunately, there's a great new way to make friends, and like all the best ways, it involves alcohol. Buddy Cup. The more buds, the more friends. Just one more case, please. We started planting a beer in the, the, the place where the Brazilian soccer team um, trained. After 60 years, Brazil hosts the FIFA World Cup once more. Brazil. Fantástico. E ao mesmo tempo que ele meio que um frio na barriga e dizer como é que eu vou conseguir fazer esse negócio virar verdade. Drama, the official beer sponsor of Brazil national team, decided to show that its passion was much more than talk. It was in its essence. Drama presents Drama Seleção Especial. We created the first beer with barley planted, grown, and harvested at the training center of Brazil's national soccer team, Granja Comari. A limited edition comes to life from this sacred soil with the history of our team as its main ingredient. For five months, the barley's plantation served as the brand showcase, creating interest even before the product was launched the perfect opportunity to leak to the press photos of the man who planted the first grains. The coach of Brazil's national soccer team, Luiz Felipe Scolari. A video telling the entire project was launched together with the website, so fans could follow the story closer, day by day, grain by grain. 214 special kits were made available exclusively online, generating more than 2.6 million visits. Part of those were given to very special people. As the product hit the shelves, the campaign took over the media. Results. One of the seven most viewed commercials in Brazil. More than $800,000 in spontaneous media. 150,000 people shared content related to the project. But on the Seleção Especial, Brazil's passion for soccer and beer were never so close. So I'm ending. These are three examples of technological things, things that are common sense. You know, it's not awkward things, but things that, are, that you can create with technology and are related to your culture, 
Brazilian women love fashion, okay? Brazilians are obsessed with Facebook and they are crazy about soccer. So it's always about our culture. It doesn't have to be old, it can be technological, but it is related to our culture. I'm ending. And I will never be back. So this is why DM9 is for the 14 times winner of the Professionals of the Year, which is global. Every year, global chooses the best commercials. And that is very important for us, to be important and relevant in your own country, right? To be relevant in real. Okay? This is why Africa has, is the most admired advertising agency for the 16th consecutive year. It is the most attractive agency, the best result in consultories. So we have to rewrite the, the story of Latin America. That is the moral of this story. We have to have our wallet back again. Absolutely. We have to be focused in money and in our culture again. Because it's very, very strange that in a co continent that is so rich, they are, they are throwing a party and they didn't invite us. We are from the outside. This is very, very strange, don't you think? So, that we will be successful if we have the power of making business and the power of glorifying our culture. Digital can bring this power back to our hands. Okay? We can buy digital. Why are we going to leave them buying digital? Why? Why can't we make the, uh, the companies with you? It is an opportunity to get back to the game and we cannot waste it. We can be ants and grasshoppers at the same time again. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, um, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love money. Yeah. Wow. Nizam, I hope you were only joking when you said you're not going to come back because you're coming back here every year. Yes? And, uh, and we will get you to open the Festival of Media next year. Okay? Thank you. I think everybody found what you had to say resonating with them here. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm going to ask some questions because we have to make the most of this wonderful man while he's here. Um, but the Facebook showcase has now started. We spent a lot of time talking about Facebook just now. There's more explanation of some of the new things they're doing in Latin America in the showcase room. For those of you who want to see it, for those of you who wish to hear some questions to Mr. Granais, these are about to start. And by the way, I love Martin Sorrell very much. We get along very well. So, um, from what I might take out, Nizan, is that you'll never sell to the multinationals. Oh, of course I will sell. <laughs> That's not the point. What I'm saying is this. The point is not about selling, it's about buying. I think it's very awkward that in the moment where in Cannes, we talk all the time about integration, we have disintegrated buying. This does not make any sense to me, especially nowadays. If you read the little brother piece of Economist, which is, to me is fantastic, I think that Alexander de Sux did a wonderful job. Buying and the way you buy and the way you reach a single male in a, in a in a small town in America, that is crucial. Yeah. So you cannot let that thing go away. For example, I have some of my me media people here. They are crucial to me. I work with them. Some of my best ideas come from them. Do you understand? Yeah. So I don't think that we can separate that. This is an old thing. 
And digital is going to give us a new perspective on that. Because buying in digital is going to be a creative skill. But haven't you lost the argument with that? Because everywhere in the world, even in Saudi Arabia, um, media agencies are allowed to trade. It's only in Brazil that, that they're not. So and in, in, in the Ju world is running... No, and in Japan too. But look, people don't drive like the English do, you know? They drive in the other way. Yeah, yeah. But that doesn't make... Huh? Yeah. They can drive the way they want. Okay, okay. Okay, that's... That, that's Ma Martin Sorrell told me that, and I told to him, look, you drive from the other side of the, the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way you eat, the way you position ourselves has nothing to do, for example, uh, sumo, huh? Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you? Well, I'm not particularly built for a sumo wrestler, but um, look, I'm working on it. But it only goes in Japan, yeah. and it doesn't mean it's wrong, baby. Yeah, okay. You know, this is in a world where people can do whatever they want. What I'm telling you is this. Can you tell me big advertising agencies in Latin America today? No. You can tell me great advertising agencies as far as cre creativity. But I'm talking about scale, yeah. and that is not fair. And so, um, in terms of what's happening in Latin America, which uh, country... We, ne we need a referendum like Scotland, yes. and we have to win. Which, um, which markets are you excited about the most in Latin America in terms of creativity? Where might you... No, 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 no. Next? In creativity, I'm excited by all Latin America. What I'm talking about is performance in business-wise. Where's your next acquisition going to be? Mexico. I'm going to follow, I'm going to follow the money, okay? <laughs> the performance. <laughs> it's certainly... I'm sorry, but it's not going to be Argentina. I'm sorry. Unless they, they change Christina, you know? <laughs> because she's an amazing woman. She's doing so well in economy, and she's doing a television station. So, look, I love Argentina. Love, love, love. Except in football. In football. <laughs> in football is tough, you know? But I love Latin America. But what we're going to be focused is Mexico, Colombia, Peru, and Chile. Okay. <laughs> These amazing, it's, a, it's an amazing continent. We just want to buy media. Yeah. Do you think that's strange? Um, I think that some global advertisers find it strange. Well, why? Why? I can tell you in Brazil, and I can compare, and next year we can compare that. Okay. We can do, uh, we could compare what yeah. kind of skills, okay? Com Brazilian full service culture to the media culture elsewhere. Exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that's what we're going to do. That's right? A good idea, yeah? That's a good idea. Maybe a specialist award. That's a good idea. I want, look, and I, will, I want you to ask the clients around the region how a centralized service that is in London can serve them uh, in, in a better way as the one that is close to them in every single country. Okay. Now, it's kind one, of strange, this. One final question. Let's just quickly move away from media. People want to know a bit about it's you. It's kind of strange. Okay. <laughs> it is right, strange. Right, you, you can calm down, Anizan. You know, Please. I have a headache, but I have to call London. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Okay. Tell us. Tell us. I have nausea. I have to call Paris. <laughs> Don't you think this is strange? I think that's potentially oh, strange. Thank, thank you. Um, tell me what you're doing with the Clinton Foundation. I'm sorry? Tell me about the Clinton Foundation. What Look. President Clinton is not only the best, one of the best presidents in the world, he is the best former president of the United States. And that is outstanding. Because look, this country is amazing. This country is fantastic. So if to be one of the best presidents in America, it's a hard act to follow. But to be the best former president of America, that's even more impressive. And the way he did it, in the last 10 years, he created the Clinton Globe Initiative that I have the honor to take part. And we have uh, raised $100 billion in commitments. Is that it, Mary? Reach how many people? 140 million. 
And what is amazing about that is that you go to the United Nations, which happens in the same week, and people talk, 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 and nothing happens, right? And in the CGI, if you make a commitment, you have to walk, what, what's this expression? Walk the talk? Yep. Walk the you talk. have to walk the talk. You have to deliver, because there will be people annoying you and uh, paying attention if you're going to perform what you have committed. So it is amazing how he became a man who reinvented himself. He is a man who has a tremendous vision of all the most important problems around the world. And he has around him some of the most brilliant minds in academia, in money, in show business, whatever. So, and besides that, he is a happy grandparent. So he's a fantastic guy, and I love to work for him. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have to confess, I did steal Nizan's wallet, and it had a lot of money in it, so I'm very happy. Um, I'll give it to you back empty after the session. Ladies and gentlemen, Facebook showcase, streams are happening. Um, but look, let's just get this man off the stage with a huge round of applause. What a wonderful talk. Ladies Thank you.